If you're a car owner, kind of like myself and many thousands of other people, well, there's a lot of things that can go wrong with a car. And a lot of people don't know usually what's wrong. A good way of finding out a solution to one of these problems is buying an OBD2 scanner and most people usually just drive up to AutoZone where they give you a printout and they try and sell you on something that you probably don't need. Other than that, if you're willing to spend $20 or even $10, I got this as a lightning flash deal on Amazon for $15. And what this is, is it plugs into your car's OBD2 system and OBD2 Onboard Diagnostic System 2, Gen 2. Um, it plugs straight in and allows you to scan the different sensors that are active. Now, given this won't tell you everything that's wrong with your car, I know a lot of people think that this will tell you every little piece that's wrong, but it doesn't. You still have to do some diagnosis of your own. Like, it won't tell me my tire's low. Some do, mine doesn't. Um, other than that, I mean, it gives you a brief general diagnosis of what may be wrong. And on my car, I wanted to give it a go. This is a faux seal. I think I said that right. Faux seal, improved version, OBD2 scanner from Amazon, very cheap. And I'm gonna give it a go. The phone I'm using is a dedicated phone for testing purposes. I'm using my old Pentex phone. And one of the things that you might want to download, the instructions recommend you download in-car dock. So if you see that, in-car dock. And the other one that I have is the light version of Torque that I use for like the infotainment system on my other car. So I have a different version of this that I can run through my infotainment system with the fold-out screen that's an Android device so I can see what gauges are being read and what is uh, what my boost is. Other than that, I mean, it's a pretty self-explanatory system that allows you to see what is on your car's computer or your car's diagnostic system. And most people would be sketchy about doing something like this, but if you're one of those people who doesn't know much about cars, this helps a lot by giving you a little more peace of mind of what you have that is wrong. Instead of going, oh, my car's broken. Other than that, let's go give it a go. Let's give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. The car is the 2002 Mitsubishi Lancer that I have, and I know there's problems with it. I know there's a lot of problems with it, and that's why I have it. So let's go. The car right here. First thing you're going to want to do is locate that OBD2 scanner. Sometimes, like on my Mazda, it's right here inside of the little cubby hole. But on this Mitsubishi, if we go underneath the dash, if we go underneath the dash, you can see it right there. So this is your OBD2 port. This allows the computer to be able to talk to units like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this in to the car and it goes in one direction. You can't really mess this up, as you can tell. It goes in one direction. And we can already see that lights appeared up on the lights showed up. There it is down by my foot. We're going to turn and put the key in. Turn the key on and I'm not going to start it. Turn my heater off. Now that the vehicle's ignition is on and the car is off, I'm going to connect it to the app. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to open the in-car dock app. It's a little dark, but there is a little thing at the bottom that says to connect to Wi-Fi OBD2. And you can see at the top, it's testing, it's testing. I'll give it a moment. And you wanna connect the phone itself to the Wi-Fi before you uh, go into the app and then connect, okay? So now that everything's popped up, it means it's connected. I'm gonna hit diagnostic. 
and it tells me that I have a P0455 and it tells me what that code is as well as I have a warm up catalyst efficiency below threshold that will never go away. So it says I have two check engine lights on and let's go see, let's see, that is correct. If I take it and check it, that is correct. You know the car is connected is that the light will be flashing rapidly which is quite dumb because if you're running it at night it's pretty poor to see but yes there's my check engine light what i can do through the app it tells me that i have two codes i can also clear those codes with this so now i'm going to go to the torque app and show you what that is let it load so it can connect okay we're at the torque app and if I turn it sideways, it'll tell me that it's checking at the top for what vehicle. Should pop up in just a second. So it says now that it's connected to the car's ECU. And what I'm going to do is this can also check codes. So say I want to see fault codes, show logged faults. This is much easier now that the brightness is up and the sun's going down a little tells me what code I have a PO401 421 and then I can search on the web what it is um, so it's pretty useful and then on top of that what I use on my infotainment system is this app torque and I have the paid version so when I turn the car on it allows me to see the response of the load, the vacuum, my speed, and all of that through the OBD2 so I can see if the car is accurately reading and the sun's coming out. So as you're driving, you can see my RPMs increase. My coolant, all of that. So, and this is in Celsius, so don't be, uh, don't be alarmed. Other than that, yeah, it's a pretty useful tool so I mean if you're not all that knowing about cars this uh, this little tool here can can give you quite a bit of information the only thing is it won't help you if you have a car that's from 1996 or before well I'm glad I could give you a brief look it's a little hard to see well I'm glad I could give you a brief look of the whole OBD2 Wi-Fi system and I mean this is so nice and useful if you're not a, if you're a tech savvy but not a car person could just go to the store and get yourself one of these and that'll also this is also like a code reader but it's a direct connection and it's kind of dummy proof but it won't give you as many options or anything it just tells you the codes both of these do have the capability of clearing the codes on the car but if the car does see a fault in the system and you clear it then the fault code will just come right back so I never understood why people just consistently clear the codes. But that's beyond my knowledge. If you do you, who cares if you want to do something like that? That's your car, that's your time. Other than that, I don't see a bad problem with this. It's kind of cool. So I have a dedicated phone specifically for it now. And it's kind of my compact code reader if I want to carry something when I'm going traveling. Say I'm going to Georgia and back. I can see what's wrong with the car. So, I'm glad I could show you. If you have any more information, just let me know. Um, I'll post a link underneath the video showing where I got it. And, hey, as car people, at least you're willing to try it. Most people don't have the second clue of what's wrong with their car. If not, they don't have a clue of what's in their car. It made me think of when someone goes, check engine light lifts up the hood and goes, oh, engine's still there, slam. And uh, I thought that was kind of a, this device will give you just a little more knowledge of what is actually wrong with your car and how you can execute a way of fixing it. So without further ado, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe for more. Check the rest of my channel, if anything. Um, yeah, I'm a car, camera, and personal dude, so yeah.